Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on the Stay at Home Show. This is episode four, and tonight I'm going to share with you some poems that I found that I quite like, and then later on in segment two, I'm going to look at some Kelvin and Hobbes. Um, my computer is having some uh, issues. My computer is having some issues this evening. And I don't know what kind of effect that could end up having on the stream. Uh, it could end up having a pretty bad effect, or it could end up having no effect. Let's hope for the best. Um, I'm going to share with you tonight, the first thing I'm going to share with you is a page that I have Oh, my, my pages are not loading well. Uh, I'm going to share with you uh, a website called poets.org. Oh, we went off of it. Uh, a website called poets.org. And if my computer is going to work for me. There we go. Poets.org, which has all kinds of poetry. Uh, it has uh, old poetry and modern poetry. And this is modern poet Marilyn Nelson, who is still around at 64 years old. Nope, 74 years old. Uh-huh. And this is a poem called Epiphany, nope, sorry. This is a poem called 15 Cent Futures. Uh, I'm just scrolling to see what the date of the poem is. They don't list the date of the poem. So this poem is called 15 Cent Futures. Uh, I'm going to read through this. And then after I've read through it, I'll talk a little bit about it. This line is part of the poem itself. Note the date is earlier than when she was alive. Uh, I'll just take a look first to see how we're looking. Oh yes, I know a web page is slowing down my browser. I would like to wait because I don't want to stop any page just in case. Epiphany Davis, 1825. Uh, the, the word epiphany, do a quick interruption here, the word epiphany is um, a sudden realization of something, a sudden knowing of something. And 15 cent futures is about selling your, your future, telling you the, your future for 15 cents a turn. Epiphany Davis, 1825. I set up my cash box and my bones and cards on Broadway, most days, offering what I see of what's to come. For a donation, words fall from my mouth, surprising even me. Uncle Epiphany doesn't forecast death or illness worse than gout or a broken bone. The sailors stop, they listen with caught breath, as I tell them some girl's heart is still theirs alone. Or not, young love is such a butterfly. Girls come, arms linked, giggling behind their fans. The sad come, Uncle Epiphany does not lie. I close shop and come back up here to my land. It's a new world up here of beggar millionaires. Neighbors who know how we all scrimped and saved To own this stony swamp with its fetid air To claim the dream for dreamers yet enslaved I am Epiphany Davis I am a conjure man I see glimpses, glass towers A horseless vehicle An American president who is half African Until you pay me, that's all I'm going to tell 
So this is this is an interesting poem that uh, I like this poem a lot. I set up my cash box and my bones and cards. These are the tools by which somebody is seeing into the future on Broadway. So this person is in New York. Uh, most days offering what I see. Um, Uncle Epiphany doesn't forecast death or illness. So people don't come to learn real things of the future, maybe. They come to be told something adventurous. Sailors and, and uh, girls coming and giggling. The sad come. This is, I like this line. The sad come. Uncle Epiphany does not lie. So does this mean that Uncle Epiphany does tell them bad news? Or does this then give the reason why he closes shop and then comes back up here to his land? Uh, it's a new world up here of beggar millionaires. I'm not sure what to make of that. Neighbors who know how we all scrimped and saved to own this stony swamp with its fetid air. Very, very difficult work to get very little to claim the dream. This is probably a reference to the American dream, which traditionally, when people say that, they mean like everybody gets, everybody, if you just work hard, then you can have a house, a piece of land, and a happy family, and etc. Um, but it doesn't work that way for everybody. There are dreamers yet enslaved. I am Epiphany Davis. I'm a conjure man. A conjure man is somebody, conjure is to do magic, to bring something out of nothing. He sees small glimpses, little flashes of vision of real things that we have today, glass towers, cars as horseless vehicles, and American President Barack Obama, who is half African. Until you pay me, that's all I'm going to tell. So these, he's talking to his customers with this line, saying you will only get a hint Marilyn Nelson wrote this in 2015. So this was 15 Cent Futures. And I enjoyed this poem. Let's go on to the next poem. Uh-oh, are we going to have to wait for my browser to load? I thought I had this preloaded. Well, this could turn out badly. Uh, this is another Oh, there we go. That's one poem that I'm going to read, but I want this one right now. Is it going to load for me, or are we going to have to skip it? Maybe we'll have to skip it. Do we have a picture here? Oh, we don't even get our picture. I'm foiled. My computer. Oh, here we go. Very good. And that will give, hopefully, these pictures time to load while we read The Pedestrian by Tommy Blunt. Okay. Uh, the Pedestrian by Tommy Blunt. I'm not sure if that's how I say his name, but that's how I said it. When the pickup truck with its side mirror almost took out my arm, the driver's grin reflected back it was just horror. Show that was never... I'm going to start from the beginning here again because I messed up the rhythm. He has... He's writing a sonnet, but he has unusual line breaks. When the pickup truck with its, with its side mirror almost took out my arm, the driver's grin reflected back. It was just a horror show that was never going to happen. Don't protest. Don't bother with the police for my benefit. He gave me a smile. He too was startled, redness in his face. When I thought I was going a short while to get myself killed, 
It wasn't anger when he bared his teeth, as if to caution, calm down, all good, no one died night, night, neighbor, no sense getting all pissed. The commotion of the past is the past. I was so dim he never saw me. Of course I saw him. So this is a poem about somebody almost getting hit by somebody dry somebody walking almost getting hit by somebody driving on the road and the person almost got hit by a pickup truck with the side mirror so it came close but in this section he talks about uh, it was just a horror show that was never going to happen don't protest, don't bother with the police. So he's saying that the driver of the truck is hoping that this person won't get angry. And he gives a smile and he shows that he was startled too. But startled and red in the face, like embarrassed, where the pedestrian thought that he was going to get killed by this truck. Uh, it wasn't anger when he showed his teeth, as if to caution, calm down, all good, no one died. Now, this part is a little bit complicated. This looks like it's hinting that the person may have been about to say uh, what we commonly say, the N-word, which is a racist word used for black people. And then he assumes how the word could have finished, maybe, with night, with neighbor, with no sense getting all pissed. Pissed means angry. The commotion of the past is the past. It's all finished now, he wants to say. I was so dim, he never saw me. Of course, I saw him. Um, I'm sure there's much that somebody could say about the position in our culture between black people and white people but I don't think that I'm the person to say those things and so for my part this is just a poem that I enjoyed very much and that I thought was interesting let's take a look at another poem and it doesn't look like these are gonna load so we're just going to have to do without. That's too bad. Uh, this poem is about swallows, which are small birds, um, small enough that you could hold one in your hand and probably cover it up or almost cover it up with your other hand. Uh, and they fly in clouds of 10, 20, or maybe 100 or more in some places. And when they fly, their clouds move all over the place as if the whole cloud was like one creature. Uh, so let's read this poem while waiting for the bus by Elliot Khalil Wilson. Under the eaves of the gas mart, swallows fall into the day, wheel before the headless grooms of the formal wear shop angle low as my shoes, then calm it up, sheer, careless of traffic, all that is grounded or down. A flight of leaf-blown cursives, blue coats over dashing white, the red rift of dawn painted upon their crowns in busy throats. I must learn to keep them with me, to hold, somehow, their accomplished joy when I'm gone to the city where I'm mostly old, and their song under the noise of ours is done. But now auto exhaust cripples the air as my gray somnambulant bus draws near. Ha, I like this poem a lot, um, and this one is, is easier to read uh, because it's mostly a straight visual. He's watching these swallows which wheel into the uh, they wheel before the grooms of the formal wear shop. 
So the formal wear shop is going to be showing suits such as new husbands would wear, and these are the grooms, but they are headless grooms because they are only the store display figures. Uh, they comet up. A comet is similar to a shooting star. Uh, it's, a, it's a bright light that we see in the nighttime sky sometimes. Uh, sheer, straight up, and careless of traffic. They don't care about traffic or all that is grounded or down. Anything that is stuck to the ground. They're a flight of leaf-blown cursives. Cursive is handwriting, but like writing that flows together. Uh, blue coats over dashing white, the red rift of dawn. Red like morning is painted on the tops of their heads, their crowns, and their busy throats. Their throats are busy because they call and they sing. And I want to keep them with me and to hold somehow their accomplished joy. I want to keep their happiness when I'm gone to the city. And in the city, oh, I can highlight now, very good. In the city, I am mostly old, and their song, under the noise of hours of work and everyday stuff, is done. But now, here at the edge of the city, auto exhaust cripples the air, and my gray somnambulant bus draws near. Somnambulant is a sleepwalker. So that was While Waiting for the Bus by Elliot Khalil Wilson. And I do apologize for the uh, technical problems caused by my computer just being stubborn. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do during the intermission. And in part two, coming up here in about 20 minutes, I'm going to be taking a look at some Kelvin and Hobbes. And I will show you fine folks where we can find Kelvin and Hobbes online and we will read a complete storyline, hopefully without too much loading difficulty. Uh, and I might end up with a whole bunch of loading difficulty trying to end the stream. Wouldn't that be funny, folks, if I end up spending five minutes trying to end the stream because I have too much lag. Well, I will do it the easy way. The video will continue, but the actual stream is going to end here. Uh, how should we best do this? I'm nervous about doing this because I don't want this to sabotage the video early. Here we go. Okay, this is it for this stream, folks. Thank you very much for joining me. Join me again in 20 minutes. That will be at about 5.40, and we'll be looking